Esther, have you ever wondered what our church has in store for us? KPC is a community saved by grace, living under grace, and learning to practice grace. Here are three things which we hold dear. Word, Jesus Christ is the living word. By him, all things were created. And through him, all people are called to a saving relationship with the living God. Today, Jesus continues to speak to us through the Bible. That is God's written word. Therefore, at KBC, we are devoted to hearing the word, living the word, and sharing the word. Community. Singapore is a metropolitan city where people live fast-paced and busy lives. We have little time for relationships. Yet, when Jesus saves us, He saves us for community. What do you think community is? To me, community is where I actually feel like it's home, I feel safe. So what about you, Esther? Uh, I feel that community is all about family, having brothers and sisters in church. Okay, that's nice. He calls us to love one another. Therefore, at KPC, we rely on God's grace to make God's family a reality. Our God is a God of mission. His mission is to restore all things to His Son, Jesus Christ. And God calls us, uh, the body of Christ, to be His workers. God's mission extends from saving souls of men to defending the weak, to sustaining the whole nation. At KPC, we are on a mission with God. Good. Community. Mission. We believe that when we are guided by these principles, we shall experience Christ and His new life, and God will be glorified in and through us. Good morning and welcome to Katong Presbyterian Church's 9.30 a.m. service. This morning our call to worship is taken from Psalm 111, verses four, 1 to verse 4. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are one pounded by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are His deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. We begin this morning's service by singing the song, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great 
Son, not sparing, send him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. shall come with shout of acclamation and lead me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great thou art and sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. My soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Let us join our hearts in our prayer of confession. And this morning, we will pray Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit 
within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I will give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifice of God I a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Lord, we pray you would forgive our sins, and we know you would you will, Lord, through the blood of Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. The Bible declares in 1 John 1 9 that if we confess our sins, God is just and faithful and he will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So may the peace of God be with you. I look to you You are my healer I look to you You restore my soul I look to you Jesus Redeemer For all who look to you will be made whole I look to you you are my healer I look to you you restore my soul I look to you Jesus For all who look to you will be made whole. I look to you, O King Eternal. Lifted from the earth for me. Upon a cross you suffered such loss Your sacrifice has made me free I look to you You are my healer I look to you you restore my soul I look to you Jesus Redeemer For all who look to you Will be made whole I look to you, Lord I look to you you are my healer I look to you You restore my soul I look to you Jesus Redeemer For all who look to you will be made whole for all who look to you will be made whole 
unto you who dwells in the heavens I lift up my eyes I lift up my eyes unto you who lives forever I lift up my eyes I lift up my eyes just as a servant waits at his master's hand so Lord my spirit waits for you more than the watchman for the morning or the hungry for their bread my heart is turned to you O Lord unto you who dwells in the heavens I lift up my eyes I lift up my eyes unto you who lives forever I lift up my eyes I lift up my eyes to dwells in the heavens I lift up my eyes I lift up my eyes unto you who lives forever I lift up my eyes I lift up my eyes Your tender mercies, Lord Never have an end My heart will ever trust in you How excellent your loving kindness how rich your faithfulness for it reaches to the clouds unto you who dwells in the heavens i lift up my eyes i lift up my eyes to you who lives forever I lift up my eyes 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 Good morning, Church. This is Pastor Lena bringing you highlights from our family news. First of all, uh, we have started a new initiative called the After Sermon Chat ASC last week. So this is to provide a platform for anyone who wants to ask the preacher about anything regarding the sermon that was just preached. And it is also a good platform for interaction between members of the congregation and the pastors. So you can submit your questions on WhatsApp to Pastor Daniel Ong, and the number is there, 9737-2535. And then log in via Zoom 10 minutes after the service. 
Now, please take note that it is not a fixed time, but it is 10 minutes after the service. And you are also welcome to join us if you have any prayer requests. The Zoom link has been sent to you yesterday. So see you later. The second announcement is about the use of KPC premises. Now, due to the COVID-19 safety man management measures, all members and visitors entering the church will need to take temperature and register as required by the current safe entry measures. And those who need to use any facility within KPC premises must register with the church office a week beforehand on a first-come, first-served basis. And the registration form is available on the link that you can see on the screen. So let us adhere to the spirit of the law because of love for our fellow Singaporeans. These laws are in place for our own safety. So do contact Sister Chris Chua at 96497132 if you need any assistance. Thank you very much. And last but certainly not the least, we would like to extend our heartiest congratulations to Brother Marvin, to Deacon Marvin and Sister Tia Hui on the birth of the baby girl Nicole Yip on 2nd September. We rejoice and praise God with the Yip family. And now before taking the offering, let me read from Luke chapter 6 verse 38 that says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So may God help us to give generously like the way that he has blessed us generously. Let us give thanks for our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, our Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you not only with our lips but with our whole lives. Accept our offerings for the service of your kingdom so that your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, prayer verse is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 to 58. 
But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Prayer point this morning, let us pray for Christian missionaries throughout the world, especially in the areas with high rates of infection. The God will provide them with words of hope and equip them to love and serve those around them. For families with young children at home, the God will help both parents to partner together creatively for the care and flourishing of their children. For single parents, the God will help them to grow their networks of support. For workers in various industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, the God will keep them from anxiety and inspire the church to support them generously. For those with mental health challenges, who feel isolated, anxious, and helpless, the God will provide them every necessary support. For the homeless, who are unable to practice the protocols of social distancing in the shelter system, the God will protect them from the disease, and the government will provide isolation shelters for them. So let us go to our prayer partner and pray this thing, pray this point, and I will lead you in the Lord's Prayer after closing the prayer.
Let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for assuring us that our labor for you will never go in vain. Lord, we pray for strength and courage and wisdom to adhere to your Holy Spirit leading, that is to ensure that your people will hear your words and receive your salvations. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who has enabled us to labor for you, who has also taught us to say this prayer. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I approach the throne of glory. Nothing in my hands I bring But the promise of acceptance From a good and gracious King I will give to you my burden As you give to me your strength Come and fill me with your spirit As I sing to you this praise You deserve the greater glory Overcome I lift my voice To the King in need of nothing Empty-handed I rejoice You deserve the greater glory Overcome with joy I sing By your love I am accepted You're a good and gracious King Oh, what grace that you would see me As your child and as your friend Safe, secure in you forever I pour out my praise again You deserve the greater glory Overcome, I lift my voice To the King in need of nothing Empty-handed, I rejoice You deserve the greater glory Overcome with joy, I sing by your love I am accepted You're a good and gracious King Holy, holy Lord Almighty Good and gracious 
gracious, good and gracious, holy, holy, Lord Almighty, good and gracious King. Holy, holy, Lord Almighty, good and gracious, good and gracious, holy, holy, Lord Almighty, good and gracious King. Because you deserve the greater glory. Overcome, I lift my voice To the King in need of nothing Empty-handed, I rejoice You deserve the greater glory Overcome with joy, I sing by your love I am accepted You're a good and gracious King You're a good and gracious King You're a good and gracious King you're a good and gracious King. Scripture reading today is taken from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, and yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush. Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their suffering and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression of which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, then you may bring that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the people of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? 
And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say these to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say these to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. I'm Pastor Ron. Today I'll be bringing you God's word to you. What is in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, isn't it? For those of us as parents, surely you will spend a lot, a lot of time thinking of a name for your child. Not just to make sure not just trying to make sure it is a nice or a good name, but also making sure that it doesn't sound silly at all so that no one can make fun of him or her in the future. You can ask uh, Marvin and Jehui, definitely they have spent a lot of time just thinking about the name Nico. And congrats. As Christians, many of us would also try to choose names that honours God. My son's name is most famous for being the name of the angel Gabriel, God's special messenger to Mary. But we didn't, change, we didn't name him after the angel. We chose the name because in biblical Hebrew, the name means a man of God. It comes from a root word that describes a confident, strong, bold man or a warrior. The L ending refers to God, Elohim himself. And that name sums up our prayers and our hopes for our little boy, that he will be a fighter for the Lord, a strong man who finds his strength and courage in God himself, a real man of God who will pursue Christ all the days of his life. His Chinese name, Enzi, it's a Chinese term describing the abundance of God's grace, a name we gave to him to honour the boundless grace that God has showered upon us. And the Bible is a very good place for finding names as well. Naming of people, places, things are very significant affairs in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. Many key figures in the Bible have their special names that reflect their parents' experience with God. Hannah named her son Samuel because it means God heard her prayer. Naomi cried and asked to change her name to Mara because it means Peter. Jesus, in the Greek form of the name Joshua, which is Hebrew for Yahweh saves. And in today's sermon, we will examine the name of God the way He has revealed to us. There are three points that I would like to touch on today. First is the great theophany of God. Who am I? Second, the matchless name of God. I am who I am. Third, the divine assurance of God three signs and the first point the great theophany of god who am i that's found in chapter 3 verse 1 to verse 12 have any one of you ever heard god speaking to you in a loud voice i can't imagine what will it be like will it be thundering loud voice or a whisper in our text today we see that how Moses had the privilege of speaking with God personally in a very real and present way. Moses heard the voice of God calling out to him at the sign of the burning bush. What is the significance of the burning bush? Biblical scholars call it fire theophany. What is theophany? The term theophany means the appearance of God 
This is normally used to refer to instances recorded in the Bible where God appeared in some ways to human. He may not appear fully, as we all know, but He revealed Himself partially or through some medium, like a pillar of cloud or a fire, in the sense that we are reading in Exodus. Our passage today reminds us that even the Bible grades, there are limitations to how God can reveal Himself. We read that, by, that, that Moses himself had to remove his sandals because he was standing on holy land, the holy ground of God. And then he speaks with God in the form of the burning bush. But with this, we see that God is not a God that is far removed from his people. Instead, he has a history with his people. He is with Israel's forefather. God has been with his people in the past. He will be with his people in the present and also in the future. This is the assurance that Moses badly needed to know Yahweh's ever-present and faithful providence since the time of Abraham in Genesis 12 and 15. The God of the past is also the God of the present. And in verse 7 to 10, the Lord say, I have seen, I have heard their cry, I know their suffering. I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians, to bring them out of that land to a good and broad land, a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Church, when you are down, when you are desperate, when you are hopeless, who do you look for? You look for someone reliable, isn't it? You go back to the person whom you can trust and have your welfare at heart, right? You don't go back to the person who is unfaithful, who betray you. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob is the person that Moses can go and look for. Yahweh has a proven record with his people, an impressive credential in that sense. That is his character, that is who God is, the real God who looks after his people. God's here with compassion and didn't stop there. He went on to declare his rescue plan in verse 8 and told Moses the exact territories that God has planted for him, to give to his people. And this land will be conquered and will be fought by and won by Joshua himself. Now God commissioned Moses to be the leader of the Exodus to get the people out of this huge mess. Of course, Moses is tested to the max as well. Moses had to face the Egyptian pharaoh head on. Having been a part of the Egyptian system, Moses knows how powerful the man God is, how ruthless he has treated his own people. But to go up against the Egyptian human God, Moses in his humanness react in shock. Like any one of us would, in verse 11, Moses says to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Many of us here would, will agree with me that there is some fear in his words, isn't it? After all, Moses had run away from Egypt because of what he has done before. He is now living a quiet, peaceful life away. But what? I have to go back there? And what? I had to take everybody out too? How can? I'm sure God also knows all this. And he's not trying to throw Moses into deep end for no reason. When God calls us to fulfill his mission, he will surely equip us with everything that we need. When God calls Moses into ministry of leading his people out of Exodus, God was ready to supply him with all kinds of special needs and help and guidance and complete with divine miracles to back him up so that everybody will see that Moses is indeed coming in the name of the Lord. And at the end, there is a sign of fulfillment, 
a sign of confirmation when Moses succeeded in him his mission of leading the people out of Egypt. Perhaps the challenge is always that fulfillment is never immediate, isn't it? At times when we begin a mission with great eagerness and passion and conviction in our hearts, but over time when we don't see the fruit, we lose heart, we lose hope. And to be sure, we don't know how long it took for Moses to take the people out of Egypt. Later on, we read about the 10 plagues, but it doesn't say that it took place over 10 days or weeks or months. For all we know, it can be dragged over a year or so or even longer. And with each new plague, it must have been gotten harder and harder for the Israelites to believe that Moses was going to succeed. But for everyone who did, who held on and obeyed and who painted their doorposts with the blood of the Lamb on the final night, they were safe. Have you ever felt that the call of God in your life that is beyond you is far beyond your capability and abilities? Is the call of God way beyond you so much that you feel that this giant rock blocking your journey even before you start on it. Do you feel like you are Moses in Exodus 4 verse 13 telling God, Oh my God, please send someone else. Are you in a place or ministry setting that you are in fear based on your weaknesses? Maybe today's word is for you. Don't look at your weaknesses and what you cannot do. Instead, look to the Lord. Remember the great encounter He has with you, that He has given you the call. Remember what God has spoken to you through His living word. Remember the promise that God has given you in His presence. And God chose you not because of your strength or your power. God chose you so that you can bring Him all the glory, honour and praise. And now to my second point, the matchless name of God. I am who I am in Exodus 3, 13 to 22. What is the name of God? What does it entail? What is the meaning and significance of it? That's the million dollar question that Moses need to know. What should Moses say to the Israelite? Do they even know this God anymore? I imagine Moses saying, you know there are many Egyptian gods, each with a different name, each with a different power. For example, the God of sun, the God of sea, and the God of music. So, who are you, God? Which one are you? Who is saving them? What do I tell them? God's response, I am who I am. Wow, I am. Was God even answering Moses or not? It's such a cryptic, cryptic reply. Imagine you ask me, who are you? And I tell you, I am who I am, Lord. At this moment, even Alison is laughing already. And I assure you that you want to punch me as well. Yet it is exactly God and God, only God who can reply me, reply us this way. Because it speaks of the all-sufficient God and the all-encompassing God. He is declaring that He isn't just the God of the moon, God of the sun, God of the stars or the planets or the plants. He is God over all things. He alone is the source of His power and His internal nature. I am. And then God revealed His personal name in four Hebrew words. Y H. W-H. Sometimes in the Bible that you read, it's all caps, L-O-R-D, that is referring to Yahweh. No one knows for sure how God pronounced it. But we 
know it most, mostly today as Yahweh. I am Yahweh, the God of the, your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This is an important point to make to the Israelites because it tells us of this God, not as a new fancy one with a new name that nobody knows, but He is the God of all generations who has been and will be active and will be present throughout all ages. So in this theophany, God is referring to him, to Moses, two aspects of who he is. Firstly, God is the God of all creation, the sustainer of all things that exist, the great I am. Second, he is the God of all the Israelites, the one who was present throughout the history of their identity as a people, as a God of their history. Jesus said this in John chapter 8, verse 58, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. When Jesus declared this, there was great confusion and implication as well. The Jews in Jesus' time right away recognized that title, I am. It belongs only to Yahweh and Yahweh only the God of all creation, the God of their history, the God who brought them out of slavery in Egypt. Who is this Jesus who declare and dare say, I am? Yet Jesus indeed was the great I am. In such a time that we are living in, in a world filled with endless social media notification and entertainments, a bombardment of distraction all around you. It is so easy for one to be distracted, to lose sight of the majesty and the beauty and the strong name of God and His holiness. Here, God gives us His own name, His most excellent name, so that we can put things into perspective. God is infinite. God is sovereign over all things. I am who I am. The name isn't just isn't some magic. You chant here, you chant there, you chant everywhere. Then everything will go well. When the Israelites hear this name, it's not like any magical thing that will help their name become better. But God knows this name gives them the confirm guarantee chop that Moses who come in the name of the Lord will deliver them out of their mystery. One of Gabriel's favorite things to do at the swimming pool is to jump into the water and create big splashes. He has had some swimming lessons but still he isn't a confident swimmer. Yet he had never he had no worries about jumping in to the deepest end of the pool as long as daddy or mommy is there. There is no moment, not even one moment of hesitation for him as he jumped and shouted out for us, Daddy, here I come, catch me! And then he dived in. Children, have a lot of things to teach us about faith, isn't it? Gabriel's blind faith and trust in our ability to catch him is, a, is what allowed him to jump without fear. For him, as long as daddy is there, as long as I can call out for mommy, I can do all things. This is what trust in the name of the Lord really means. You trust in the name of the Lord. You have faith in God and He will see you through even the darkest moment of your life. Church, what are you going through right now? Is your marriage on the rocks? Are you going through a tough time at home? Are you facing a great giant? at your workplace? Are you feeling uncertain about the future 
and having difficulty finding a job? Are you putting your faith in the false God rather than, rather than the one true God, Yahweh? The name that is above all other name, I am. Now to the last point, the divine assurance of God. Three signs that's found in Exodus 4, verse 1 to 9. When you are in doubt, when you are uncertain of the future, what do you think? What do you ask for? If you are Moses, you will ask for a sign. You ask for some a form of assurance, isn't it? He has humbly accepted his job. But I think he's just like any one of us. We will, have, we will keep having doubts in our heart and in our mind. We keep hoping for more signs that tell us, okay, can proceed. So God was very kind to Moses. He didn't just give him one, but he gave him three signs. The first was turning Moses' staff into a snake. The purpose is not to scare the people of God, but it's a display, a demonstration of God's power. I'm reminded of a recent visit to the river safari, that even though many people see a snake, they say, eee! they are so scared of it. But actually, the right response for them is to say, wow, and wow indeed, to turn a piece of wood into a living snake a real life snake in front of you. This is to demonstrate the power of God. And one can be assured that God's power is upon Moses. The second sign affects Moses personally, putting his hand into his clothes pocket and turning it into some form of leprosy or skin disease. But then putting it again makes it completely healed. Surely, we, in today's time, we have many magicians who can perform illusions where things can appear out of nowhere or transform in different things. Perhaps that first sign of the snake and of the staff may not be sufficient. Maybe it's just a trick eye performance. But so, the second sign make it personally for Moses. Surely, your own hand you know what you have and what you should not have at all. And when you develop a rash, you will surely know. The sign revealed that God was not just the Lord over all things, but He has the power over us, human. Only the one with power over us has the ability to affect us with pain, but also have the ability and the power to heal and to restore us. And now to the final sign. The third sign brings us to the enemy's territory. The river now is a significant place for Egypt, as it is the source of life where they receive water, nourishment, and food. It's also worshipped as a god for the Egyptians. So why make a miracle happen there? For a god of the Israelites to turn the Egyptian life-giving river into blood tells Moses and all the Israelites that God has power over the enemy as well. He is a hint of what is to come as later on the Egyptians will receive this as one of the ten plagues where they will worship river of life will turn into the river of death. In conclusion, we have heard about the great visitation of God and the call of Moses. We have heard about the matchless name of God, I am who I am. We have heard about the divine assurance of God, the three signs that God has graciously given to Moses. Where is God calling you to? His promise is that His presence is with us. Where are you? What are you going through? His promise is that His name is with you. 
Are you doubting the faithfulness of God? His promise is His assurance is with you. There's, there's a song that ministers to me recently. The title of the song is Goodness of God. I won't be singing the song. Instead, I will read out the lyrics and then you can listen with your heart. I love you, Lord, for your, may, your mercy never fails me. All the days I have been held in your hands, from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I'm able, oh, I will sing the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. And in darkest night, you are close like, no, like none other. I have known you as a father. I have known you as a friend. And I live in the goodness of God. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we pray, and you help us to really worship you and no one else. Take away any false idols, any kind of false hopes, any kind of false God in our hearts that we can only cling on to the name of God, the great I Am. Amen.
Church, arise and put your armor on. Hear the call of Christ our Captain. For now the weak can say that they are strong in the strength that God has given. With shield of faith and belt of truth, we stand against the devil's lies. An army bold, whose battle cry is love, reaching out to those in darkness. Our call to war, to love the captive soul, but to rage against the captor. And with the sword that made the wounded whole, we will fight with faith and valor. When faced with trials on every side, we know the outcome is secure. And Christ will have the price for which he died an inheritance of nation arise shine for your light has come arise shine for the risen sun lift your eyes we are his radiant bride arise O church arise come see the cross where love and mercy meet and the God of sorrow is stricken then see his foes like crushed beneath his feet For the conqueror has risen And as the stone is rolled away And Christ emerges from the grave This victory march continues till the day Every eye and heart shall see him So Spirit, come, put strength in every stride. Give grace for every hurdle that we may run with faith to win the prize of a servant good and faithful. As saints of all still line the way, retelling triumphs of His grace, we hear the call. And hunger for the day When with Christ we'll stand in glory Arise, shine, loud a light has come Arise, shine for the risen sun Lift your eyes We are His radiant bride. Arise, O church, arise. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise, shine, for the risen sun. Lift your eyes, we are His radiant bride. Arise, O church, arise. Arise, O church, arise. Church, this is the benediction. May the ever presence of God be with you always. May the great name of God, Yahweh, the
God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob be the name that you put your faith in. May the divine assurance of God assure you in all that you do, especially in the darkest moment of your life. Amen. Please come for the after-service chat. Log in to the link after the service. Thank you. 10 minutes after the service. Thank you.